Hi there and welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend and today I'm going to try to share from my heart the chapter in the book that we're talking about is called Mountain High and Valley Low and it's talking about the Mount of Transfiguration in sharp contrast to the rest of the disciples who weren't up on the mountain and the struggles that they were facing while the other three were up on the mountain having a great old time. Well, this particular chapter has had a deep meaning in my life and I'm going to explain why. Back when I was in high school, I was invited to attend a retreat uh, that was put on in my high school about every three months or so. And it was led by a born-again priest. Just a little note, I am not Catholic, but I am not anti-Catholic. The, the purpose of this retreat was to bring us into a heart realization of God's love for us and his desire to have an intimate relationship with us as an individual. It wasn't just God so loved the world, but it was God so loved Joe or Catherine that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus died for me and that he rose again so I could live with him. Well, this retreat was amazing. It was full of testimonies of how people who had gone through this retreat had had their lives changed, but it was also full of practical acts of kindness, an intense experience. And by the time Sunday afternoon rolled up and we all were going to have to go home, none of us wanted to go. Our very last session always ended the same. We had a time of worship and then our leader would share his final thoughts. Anybody who had attended this retreat more than one time or who, who were working behind the scenes knew what he was about to say, but we all were enthralled anyhow. He would talk about the truth that yes, we had been in a mountaintop experience and yes, we encountered the love of God, but he would remind us that we were going to have to come down that mountain sometime that emotional high and that spiritual revelation in our heart were not the same thing. The emotions might fade, but God's revelation and our newfound life in Him would never go. He cautioned us that we were going back into a world that might not understand everything that we went through. There might be some trials just outside that door, he knew most of us because he was a teacher in our high school and he knew many of us came from very dysfunctional homes. Although I no longer belong to that stream of Christianity, I am forever grateful for this man of God who brought me to a heart realization of God's love towards me and the importance of this little truth that I'm going to read to you. God is always with you. Jesus will guide you if you allow him to. Don't be afraid of the valleys that wait for you. Be reassured that even if you cannot feel him as intensely in the valleys as you did up in the mountaintops, Jesus has not moved and his affection towards you has not dimmed by any stretch of the imagination. Don't be fooled by your fleeting emotions. God will be as close to you tomorrow and the next day and the next month and the next year as he is today. Those words spoken so long ago still echo in my ears because that simple teaching has carried me through many mountaintop and valley experiences. I cannot expect the emotional rush that I feel when I have some new revelation of God's character to be there forever. And yet, I can expect that when I'm in the valley and things are kind of dark and I'm not really sure I'm hearing God very well, 
It's not because he has distances himself. It's just that I'm in a different atmosphere. I know that I will continue to face trials in my life, but I don't allow them to overwhelm me anymore because Jesus promised he will always walk beside me, and I've never seen him go back on that. He will not forsake me, and he will always strengthen me.